change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and I just finished a run, and I'm back at the studio now. It's almost 10 o'clock at night, and it's about 18 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and running tonight was probably one of the last things on earth that I wanted to do, which is exactly why I did it. Not because I have to run, but because I was having a really tough afternoon and evening and I wanted to shift. And I wanted that shift to be a gentle one, not a forced shift. But I know that movement helps to move me up here. It helps to change the chemistry. It helps to change which parts of my brain are dominant or are most conversationally active and by moving my body, I can switch my chemistry, my biology, my physiology, and change my state and therefore change my perspective and change what type of Tim shows up. And it's a Tim that I like. It's a good Tim, a fun Tim. Anyway, I am not a huge fan of running in town on roads. As most of you probably know, I'm a trail guy. I want to be out lost in the woods, especially when there's a lot of snow. I just want to spend two to four hours out there traipsing around. That's my idea of movement. But running in the cold, in the dark, in town, uh, where there's ice on the streets and sidewalks, and it's kind of dangerous, and most cars can't see you, because they're not paying attention and they don't expect you to be out on a cold night, uh, almost 10 o'clock. So, not ideal, but that's okay. What I do is I break it down into the individual steps. Number one, get out of the car. Number two, start your watch. Number three, lean forward. Number four, pick up your foot. Number five, run. But no expectations, no amount of time that I have to meet, no mileage goal that I have to meet, just run. And within about 100 meters, I came to an intersection, and if I had gone straight, I would stay at a more major road with more traffic, turn right, now I'm on a quiet side street with barely any lights and no traffic whatsoever. So I chose that route. And then I came to another intersection, decided to turn right again, because that's gonna take me up into Old Bennington, up the hill. And it's just beautiful up there. Lots of neat Christmas lights and really old homes from the 1700s. And it's the historic part of town. It looks like what most people think of when they think of a Vermont village around Christmas time. So it's a really neat spot to run. And I got up the hill into Old Bennington, turned right again up the hill even further to the monument, which is 306 feet tall and is lit up at night. And it's this old gray stone built in the 1800s. And it's, it's inspiring. And there's a loop around it, a circle. It's a quarter mile long. And it's not lit at all. The monument is lit, but dimly lit. They didn't want it to be overpowering. So it's just a little bit of light on it. Just enough for me to see uh, probably two or three hundred feet away on the loop around it, enough to not trip on the road as I went, but very dimly lit and no traffic whatsoever. Nobody's driving on the monument loop at night. <sighs> and I just let myself do a lap. To me, it's kind of like Rocky running up the steps in Philadelphia, and then he turns around and looks at the city, and when I get up to the top of the hill and I run around the monument, it's my Rocky moment. So whenever I can, I include the monument in my runs around town. But after that first loop, I didn't feel like continuing into town on a different road. That felt a little too confrontational. Uh, I wasn't ready to be confronted by a road that I know is a mile long. And if I do a particular loop, my brain starts calculating mileage. And I'm like, oh, God, that's scary. If I do that loop, that's going to be like seven miles. So I said, you know what, just run another lap around the monument. And I'm listening to a great book called The Anatomy of Peace by the Arbiger Institute. And there's a lot of really good stuff in there that uh, is really in alignment with what I've been working on. And it's been a fun listen. So I did a lap and I thought, I'll oh, just do another lap. 
and did that lap and I'm getting lost in the book. I'm not worrying about traffic. I'm not worrying about directions. I'm not worrying about icy sidewalks because I'm running right in the middle of the road. And I just kind of got lost in this loop, in this book. And because I couldn't really see well, I was never confronted by the distance. The only thing that I was present to was this giant stone obelisk lit up to my left that I kept going around and this book and the stories and I'm going and going and every now and then my watch would buzz which means that I've gone another mile and it was a really profound experience because I could experiment and explore and get lost inside of the safety of this loop without being confronted by the knowledge of a definite measured loop out there in the world somewhere. I didn't have to keep track of what I was doing. Just stay in the dark, stay away from the traffic, stay around this monument. That's the only directional you need. And listen to the book and feel your form, but also feel like a passenger on a ride. Let my body do the thing and let my consciousness simply be a passenger on this ride and let it be listening to a story in the back seat of the car while somebody else drives, while other parts of my brain and body do the driving. I'm just gonna be a passenger here and really engage in the story that I'm listening to. And it was a unique experience for me, one that was incredibly powerful because, as I said earlier, I did not wanna to run tonight. And I was hoping, hoping, hoping that I could get myself to do two miles because I thought two miles will shift me enough so that I can get some work done tonight because I have a lot of work to do. I'll probably be working till midnight or one in the morning and I needed that boost, that shift in order to make that happen. And before you know it, my watch beeps again and it was six miles. So it was a little over a mile to get to the monument and then I had done five miles around the monument. And then I thought, I well, might as well keep going a little more. So I did another lap and then I was feeling pretty good. Not only had I shifted inside of the experience and really, really got present to what I was listening to because I didn't need to make any decisions on the run. Like when I'm running in the woods, I don't need to make conscious decisions. I just run through the woods. I let the woods tell me where to go. But running in town with traffic and with ice, um, it's dangerous and there's a lot of decisions that need to be made, especially with the network of streets and where they go. But I didn't have to use my prefrontal cortex for the run. I could use it to engage in the story. I could use it to engage in my form, whatever I wanted to. And it was a really beautiful time. And now I'm totally shifted and I'm elated, in fact. And the run came out to be about 7.8 miles total. and. It was totally unexpected. When you keep the goal away and you just allow it to take place really gently, it's amazing what can show up. And this is something I do again and again and again in different ways. I keep experimenting to find new ways of letting the run take place on its own, letting the run communicate to me rather than me dictating what it's going to be. And each time I'm really surprised and amazed at how it evolves and then how I feel during and after. So if you're stuck, maybe the last thing that you want to do is the best thing to do, but not to lose weight or to get fit or to hit a weekly mileage goal, but simply because it's going to shift you. It's going to change your experience. And if you let that happen, if you're willing to take the steps to put on the shirt, put on the pants, to put on another shirt and another shirt and another shirt and a jacket, to walk out the door, to greet the night air, to let the cold hit your cheeks and nose, to walk to the car, to open the door, to sit there for a moment, to turn it on, to back up, to pull out, and on and on and on. If you're willing just to be present to taking each one of those steps at a time, before you know it, you're in the run without any force and then the run becomes its own thing and it shows you things that you never imagined it shows you things that you didn't think possible and it changes who you are in that moment 
So I hope there's some value in there for you. There's a lot of value in there for me tonight. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to keep this channel alive and get access to some content that's available nowhere else, head on over to Patreon, where for two bucks a month, you get access to my Patreon-only feed, where I'm going to be coming out with my new podcast later this week, which is for Patreon subscribers only. It's two bucks a month. You get access to all this. Plus, you help me create more content like this without constantly freaking out about finances. <gasps> okay, I'm off to work. I love you guys. See ya.